Good afternoon, this is Sean Ferringer, and welcome to this afternoon's webinar regarding recent improvements in Creole Parametric. Uh, we're going to talk about a handful of new things that have come along in a uh, recent couple of releases, like since Wildfire 4 and beyond. Um, this isn't going to be a what's new specific to any given version, just a what's new and kind of recent improvements as it relates to, you know, bigger functionality and bigger changes that have came in the most recent releases. Uh, so we'll be covering a handful of topics today. Um, we'll start with a short presentation, um, or excuse me, a short PowerPoint presentation, and uh, then we'll transition off into having a, a demonstration of some of the things we discussed in the uh, presentation. Um, I am going to, I am doing an audio check right now with my colleague. So please bear with me regarding the audio check, and once that's complete, we're going to kind of dive right in. Okay, it looks like our audio check is working okay. If any individuals participating in the webinar are having difficulty um, with respect to the audio on your end, um, don't hesitate to uh, go ahead and ask a question or shoot a chat message out to me um, and let me know that you're having some audio difficulty with the presentation in terms of hearing it. Um, I have all of the participants other than myself muted um, so that it keeps the, the call and audio quality a little bit cleaner for everybody that's participating. So again, if there's a breakdown in the audio, um, don't hesitate to send me a chat message in relationship to letting me know, hey, there's something going on, and we'll see if we can't get that cleared up for you specifically or everybody that's participating. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and get started here this afternoon. So um, our agenda for the webinar today will be, um, we'll have a little introduction, as I mentioned. We'll talk a little bit about boundary systems um, and some new things in Creo here, and we have a few PowerPoint slides that are related to that and we'll cover that and um, once we do that we'll have as I mentioned some demonstration and um, after the demonstration there'll be some open time for some basic question and answer and uh, that type of stuff as far as um, you know things we've covered in the presentation and um, some basic general questions if there are any. Okay. So a little bit about Boundary Systems. Uh, boundary Systems is a, a technology leader in the PTC channel, um, serving obviously a host of PTC's largest and uh, most, most robust clientele, if you will. Um, we have the complete suite of capabilities um, to support the PTC product line as well as other product lines uh, that Boundary Systems manages, um, whether that be training, implementation, consultation, um, configuration, whatever the case may be, uh, cloud services as it relates to um, wind chill, et cetera. Uh, Boundary Systems is a complete one-stop shop solution provider for all these types of things in, in the Boundary, you know, excuse me, in the PTC ecosystem. Um, we can see also that Boundary Systems has worked with quite a few of the larger of PTC's clients and continues to do so, as you can see from the, the list of clients here on the slide. Um, some awards that have been uh, bestowed upon Boundary Systems, um, some Inc. 5000 awards, some Weatherhead 100, um, some major acc accreditations, if you will, uh, would be a certified uh, Boundary Boundary Systems, obviously being a certified wind chill implementer um, and, and also training provider, of course, uh, PTC preferred service provider and PTC certified and preferred training partner, um, covering the whole suite and, and host of all PTC products um, as, as it relates to both Creo Parametric, the wind chill um, application as well. Um, solutions that Boundary Systems focuses on in the software ecosystem, um, as we said, PTC being primary focus of Boundary Systems, um, 
They are also a, a solution provider for Solid Thinking, eTrage, and ZWCAD are also some other software applications that Boundary Systems can be your, your solution provider for. So now we'll start talking a little bit about some of the things that we'll cover in the webinar. Um, some of the things in the webinar I will cover and some of the things that I'm speaking to um, require a little bit more depth than, and they, they're really justified to be a, a, a review or a discussion in and of themselves. And I've got some information um, during the course of the slide deck, and we'll also put it up at the end of the webinar um, during the question and answer um, to get to get everybody that's participating some you know some access and some linking to some additional information. Um, we'll, I'll speak to those things as we go forward, but the Boundary Systems YouTube channel will be a really good supplement for some of the things that we can only speak to today and not necessarily take a deep dive into those things. Okay. So some of the things that have been enhanced inside of Creo lately. Um, we've got a new expanded mini toolbar. Um, it provides quick and direct uh, in-context access to most important tool options. It's also customizable to you know a, a degree, which you know is something a new a new theory, if you will, for a PTC is giving us a little bit more of that very, very granular user interface customization functionality. So the mini toolbar, it continues to be improved um, with cleaner, uh, more appropriate, you know, icons and text and verbiage. We'll be seeing a lot of that in the interface um, when we're looking at Creo 6 today. Um, there's been a lot of polish as it relates to the interface itself in terms of changing of icons and dashboards and things to that effect have been improved notably. Uh, model tree has also been improved lately, if you will. Um, we have easier to understand locations in the model tree. It's also um, a little bit of context sensitive filtering, searching. Uh, the model tree has really been enhanced um, in, its, in its coordination with the graphics window and the graphics area now in ways that it wasn't historically, and these things have definitely benefited the user's workflows. Um, we have automatic storing of settings now um, in Creo 6 and moving forward with respect to the model tree itself can be project local specific settings as, in, you know, working, if you will, in conjunction or as opposed to the historical settings of the model tree filters and things to that effect. Um, we used to have a, a tree config file, if you will, and now we can kind of have that a little bit more granular and a little bit more local than what's been historical, if we so choose to, to use it that way. Uh, we have updated skins and dashboards inside of Creo, and as I mentioned, we'll be taking a look at a bunch of that stuff. I'll be showing a handful of the new dashboards and interfaces and things to that effect today um, that have been added in the most recent versions of Creo, if you will. So uh, we also have a specific new dashboard for definition of markers and cable size. Um, any of the participants that um, are in, in engaged in uh, what we would say the schematics and more likely possibly the cabling parts of the application um, will enjoy the benefit of having striped wires now both by definition and visuals if you will. Um, this will be one of the things that we'll take a quick look at today during the presentation. Uh, we'll be taking a look at the context of you know how that looks on the model and what the dialogue looks like and a little bit of working with the new striped wires dialogue if you will. Some additional enhancements that have come along are also the context of sheet metal. We have support for corner seam and corner relief options with neighboring walls. Um, this has to do with, you know, when we perform certain wall applications in sheet metal, the auto reliefs and such and the reliefs that are available to you um, to, you know, if you will, accommodate the bend in question in a sheet metal operation have uh, now been kind of improved in terms of these relief operations. And not only that, but their workflows about using them and whatnot has been improved, you know, notably inside of sheet metal. Uh, volume sweep now allows for the creation of a helical trajectory curve. You can kind of see a little bit of the view in that. Um, in the lower left-hand graphic figure here on the screen right now. Um, this allows for you to, you know, 
get a get a curve back out of the sweep, if you will, in a way that you know historically kind of wasn't wasn't very typical. Uh, we also have a nice preview theory now for drill tip angle, and it's a controllable parameter um, inside of the whole tool. Okay, um, one of the things I can't really show, uh, but arguably will be a welcome change for a host of users, and as well as not only the users, I would say, but arguably um, a, a great majority of our CAD admin group um, will probably, you know, be thrilled that we now have the opportunity to do automatic notification for maintenance releases. So historically, it's been, well, okay, I've got to go, excuse me, I've got to go log into ptc.com today and determine if I have a new maintenance release and if I'm waiting on a particular release for, for instance, an SPR or something to that effect that I know is coming, a solution for an SPR that I know is coming, and, uh, you know, a, a future, you know, date code release, if you will. Um, historically, it's kind of been the onus on the user to maintain a checking regime as to when and if that release is available to you. Um, now, we're, you know, PTC enables us to be automatically notified when those releases become available. So it will be a little less cumbersome for the user. And again, especially in those cases where there may be a, a specific SPR that is relevant to the user group or the installation location that we're waiting for that release to become available to solve that problem. Okay. We also have uh, some enhancements to Render Studio now, supports emissive appearances. Um, again, further building on the changes to Render Studio in the recent, in the recent, excuse me, in the recent versions and subsequently continuing to improve its functionality. We also have some additive manufacturing enhancements that have been taking place. Um, and we have now some new lattice generation functionality. I'll be briefly showing some of the lattice functionality today just in a quick theory. Um, this allows some of the changes that we've we've seen recently are stochastic lattices, formula driven, um, user driven lattices, and arguably, or excuse me, and also lattice transitions are also now some of the enhancements that have came lately. Down skin analysis, analyze and optimize part orientation to reduce support structures, used early in design process to determine lattice orientation. So they're continuing to optimize the context of the lattice functionality as it relates to additive manufacturing, making it more robust, working with, continuing to work with new and advanced lattice types um, that serve specific purposes, whether that be in the medical industry or the mechanical uh, design industry, if you will. So topology optimization, we've also had recent enhancements in the software that relate to topology optimization. We are now supporting assemblies in topology optimization and we have an improved results workflow for this. You can animate the optimization study now and we have tools to edit the resulting facet mesh and such that is created by the topology optimization. You can see the context of the facet mesh in the lower left-hand graphic. We also have improved geometry reconstruction to control the level of detail and control the, the reconstruction from a facet within freestyle. So we're starting to lever the freestyle functionality into the topology optimization as well. Augmented reality, PTC continues to be the leader in advancement in both, um, excuse me, AR and IoT technology. Um, recent enhancements with augmented reality. We can publish and store up to 10 models per user and the models can be published from Creo, from Creo Elements Direct from Windchill or from Creo View now. You have access rights control 
for viewing models in um, augmented reality. Um, public, anyone with a link can view, and restricted, you can add or remove um, access rights at any time. Um, in terms of viewing, we can generate a QR code for launching the AR experience, and we now have support for the HoloLens. Creo Simulation Live, this is a very big, um, big, new and, and, and big lift, I guess, if you will, for PTC. Um, Creo Simulation Live, if you have supported hardware, allows for simulation of the object in real time as you design. So it takes away the loop of design, simulate, change, design, simulate, change, if you will, and these things are workflowed right together seamlessly so that the simulation component becomes a fundamental part of the design itself as opposed to a secondary process. There are some limitations about supported hardware. NVIDIA KUDO graphics, I believe, are required. And this is available in Creo 6.1 and later. Okay, um, this is an instantaneous simulation experience, or arguably very close there too. With geometry enabled, you can easily edit or create features while the analysis is running. Um, the initial capabilities that are available to you are structural, thermal, and modal simulations. Um, we can leverage mechanism loads. Promote, or excuse me, promote part boundary conditions to the top level, define bodies, and probes are listed in the simulation tree. Okay, with that, um, here is some technical information um, about both myself, how to contact myself, as well as how to contact our sales team. As I had previously mentioned, um, the link to the Boundary Systems YouTube channel is shown down here on the bottom of this page, and that's an excellent resource that has an enormous amount of information in greater depth about specific things I have mentioned on the slide deck that we won't be diving into specifically today. Um, like, for instance, the Creo Simulation Live, um, that's something that my particular hardware that I have today doesn't support. But we have, we have excellent information up at the Boundary Systems YouTube channel that speaks to that functionality already today. So I encourage everybody to make note of the Boundary Systems YouTube channel to follow up on, to follow up on particular items of interest that we may not speak to explicitly in this webinar today. And um, again, I will put this, this slide back up when we get to the Q&A portion of the webinar here after we've kind of gone through the demonstration part. Okay, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put our slide deck away, and we're going to jump into Creo Parametric. So, the first thing we'll take a look at today inside of Creo Parametric are some basic changes and enhancements to the user interface. So, I'm going to go ahead and open up a component here. Um, that we're going to go ahead and uh, just take a look at. So let me go ahead and get my directories and this component set up here. So we've got an object we're going to take a look at here. And I just wanted to put an object on the screen so we can kind of discuss and take a look at some of the, of the new dashboards and the enhancements um, to different functionality inside of Creo. So for instance, um, we see here the mini toolbar that has been mentioned. Um, we have a mini toolbar that operates in the graphics window that allows us to short circuit to specific functional or excuse me, specific features and methods right by the selection in the graphics window. The mini toolbar is also available to us in the context of the feature tree itself. Um, in the recent versions of Creo, there's been some enhancements with respect to, as you can see here, I'm highlighting in terms of 
showing and hiding functionality inside of the model tree in terms of different hide show selection workflows have been supported now that were not historically available to us from the mini toolbar when used on the model tree. The model tree itself has many enhancements in terms of functionality and filtering of the model tree itself. We can subsequently type into the search filter here and we see that it will automatically filter out my model tree down to the items that subsequently meet what I've typed in for my search. So in this case, I typed in curve and it went and found the four curves that exist inside of this particular model tree automatically and it filters them accordingly. Now, I, even though the model tree is filtered, the, the, the beauty of this is, is even though the tree is filtered now, I can still perform an edit definition on any of the selected objects, even in the display filtered state. So I don't need to unfilter this to go subsequently select this object and, you know, activate edit definition on it. So the, this model tree filtering has been very beneficial in terms of allowing users to navigate, you know, terribly large model trees that become more and more typical every day. When we don't want to filter the model tree anymore, we can simply click the X to clear that and it clear what has been typed in for the search. And as soon as we clear what has been typed in for the search, you see that it reestablishes the default condition of the model tree. Okay. So that's a little bit about our model tree enhancements, if you will, in terms of some new dashboards that are available to us, or I shouldn't say new dashboards. Arguably, many of these dashboards have previously existed, but they are they are arguably notably more elegant now. So we'll go ahead and, oops, I'm sorry, we'll go ahead and take a look at the extrude dashboard now. So we can see here in Creo 6 um, that things are kind of being consolidated and optimized and there's better information that's being presented to the, the, the user. Um, this is going to be a big benefit to new users um, and arguably presents a, a, you know, a nicer interface to the more experienced users, but historically where we would have only had these icons to designate solid and surface, we now gain the benefit from having the dashboard layout rearranged that more information and, and, you know, bold information for controls and what they apply to is now being included and additional text is being presented with the icon in order to improve, you know, the, the, the feel, the, but not only the look and feel, but the usability again for new users. And some of our, our flyout menus arguably being the same, but the dashboard has been notably enhanced. We also see that there are, you know, some tips that are being brought into some of the open space that has existed on the on the dashboard. Here we see, you know, with respect to the extrude, yeah, we're going to use that to create 3D geometry by translating 2D sketch, um, normal to a plane, etc. And you've got the little read more here that you can kind of queue up as well and that will activate additional information um, once you select that if your help center and all of those things are kind of linked into that as far as bringing up additional information for the new tips that are included in the dashboard if you will but the dashboard interface for extrude is one of the many that has been enhanced um, virtually all of the dashboards like that have been touched and improved both for the elegance of you know existing users and the ease of use and the, 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 the quickness of we'll say retention and take up for the training of new users now as it relates to the different you know interface to the dashboard everything is kind of clear and laid out and you know bolder text is being used um, where applicable to help indicate 
different aspects of the dashboard um, and, and the significance of different settings in the dashboard, if you will. So that's a little bit of the, the nature of different, excuse me, different, uh, if you will, you know, changes to the dashboard. There will be a lot of that look and feel that will have subsequently um, transposed on the model. So uh, one of the things we'll go ahead and do now is we'll, we'll quilt this thing up here real quick into a surface, or excuse me, into a solid. Um, we'll merge this up real quick, and then I'll show a couple of additional tools on it. Here again, you see there's a little bit of enhancement with respect to the merge tool. And again, what what is possibly going to be most beneficial for new users and such is the, the tips and the inclusion of guided information that's going to become a part of the dashboard now uh, moving forward. So we'll go ahead and uh, merge this up and solidify it here. And um, again, virtually all of these dashboards are 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 touched in some way. Here we see um, I've reactivated the solidification dashboard, and we see that it has been improved and modernized as well in the most recent in most recent versions. And it also benefits with the context of not only showing us icons but also text. Okay, so let's have a look at the new hole tool enhancement. So I'm going to go ahead and place a hole here on the model for us to take a look at preview. So bear with me while I deploy this hole. And we're going to go ahead and make it a standard hole. And then we'll go ahead and turn our preview on. And we see here in the shape I have the, the drill point control and I have the preview that is applicable to it. So when I change the drill point profile on the control, I subsequently see the change in the point profile on the model. Waiting a second here for everybody's screen to catch up. Okay, so everybody screens up and you should be able to see the new enhancement of the drill point profile kind of being shown there. Okay, so that's just one of the many enhancements. And again, you see here that the, the drill point, or excuse me, the hole tool has also benefited from enhancements now to the dashboard. So we'll go ahead and say okay and just leave that hole behind. Um, another aspect of um, change that has come along in the user interface are some changes related to um, data exchange and another thing I'm going to show is point projection but I'm kind of going to go show those in conjunction together so we're going to kind of close this model and we're going to open up a different model now for the purpose of moving the discussion forward So in this case, we're going to go ahead and open a step file. And we'll give it a second for everybody's screen to catch up here. But um, one of the new enhancements that's kind of come lately in the context of all things Parametric is enhancements to data exchange. Um, and Creo is becoming arguably the most robust CAD package on the market as it relates to data exchange, uh, both in the ability to customize it and work with it and arguably um, unparalleled in the context of being able to act on imported geometry in a meaningful way, um, whether that's manipulating uh, imported features like holes or surfaces based on dimensional information, or that's recognizing features on an imported model. Arguably, Creo Parametric is becoming a leader, or PGC with Creo Parametric, excuse me, is becoming a leader in these in these features. So we're going to go ahead and take advantage of our saved profile here, and I'm just going to quickly show this. Um, we now have import profiles that can be saved and that can subsequently be loaded. We've had this for some time, um, but the, the some of the big enhancements that are coming now are changes to the configuration editor um, that we access by using 
file options, and we have a specific data exchange um, setting control. And here we can control import and open profiles, as well as exporting profiles in cases where the export from Korea needs to be specific for a target system to import it in an optimal way. Um, these things can all be saved and selected and used in a, in a very much automatic sense, okay? We have control specifically over import validation now and whether or not import validation is enabled in a global sense. If you do a lot of importing and exporting, you may in fact not want to keep import validation enabled. Um, it can be a little message cumbersome in cases where you're doing a lot of importing and exporting. But we now have a very nice single source configuration environment for handling the nature of data exchange and controlling it in a very granular way as it relates to sharing data between Creo Parametrics and other systems. Okay, so another thing that we'll talk about is an enhancement of a, a feature creation type um, that we've been given recently. So one of the things we've been given recently from PTC is the ability to create projected points. So I'm going to select this vertex here on the model in the area of the cursor, and you can kind of see this, you'll see the screen catch up here shortly, bear with me. Okay, now the screen's caught up. So what we can do now is subsequently select a vertex, a line, end point, something to that effect, and and simultaneously hold the control key and select a surface and then set our point type to be project as opposed to offset in this case. See, historically this would only create an offset. We now have a point project type available to us as well to utilize underneath of the point tool. So here we select point project and we see the new data point that's being projected from that location to the surface, um, previewing in the area of my cursor where the new project, or excuse me, the new projected point will be created and located. So that's going to be a notably handy feature, I think, um, for everybody going forward, whether that's, again, you know, projecting an endpoint, a curve endpoint slash vertex, if you will, as I did in this case, um, either way very likely to be something that, you know, a number of users can benefit um, from the point projection functionality as opposed to historically creating the sketch, creating a, you know, projecting the reference into the sketch, and then subsequently putting, the, you know, a datum, formal datum point from the sketch or datum group onto that reference in the sketch. Um, that whole process has been, you know, consolidated into the context of being able to be just another datum point in a datum point feature. So that's likely to provide some notable benefit for folks moving forward. Um, the next thing we're going to take a look at today are some enhancements that have come along in the NC system of the software. So um, some recent enhancements that came along in some recent versions of Creo um, provide for the effect of specific high-speed uh, machining sequences. We now have, as we see here, um, and that I'm pointing to here in my ribbon, I'm waiting for your screen to catch up now, as we see here in the ribbon, um, in the area that I'm pointing to with the cursor, um, we have a group of new high-speed machining uh, sequences available to MC. These are exclusive to high-speed machining type techniques. Um, we have now, we have now or and it, excuse me, the software now includes um, a technique of HSM rough, HSM rest roughing, HSM finishing, and HSM rest finishing. Um, when used in conjunction with one another, um, this largely can cover the greater share of depth of all of, we'll say, the organic shapes of roughing and finishing those types of things out in CNC manufacturing equipment. 
Um, the new sequences are very, very much easy to use and very much work in the same definition as the pre-existing sequences and cycles did. Here we see I've activated the ribbon for uh, the HSM rough sequence. Um, we see it looks very similar to the context of what we would expect for um, the standard HSM, or excuse me, the standard PTC roughing or volume roughing type dashboards. So everything is, is very consistent user interface for the new high speed machining. Um, the parameter system, or excuse me, the parameter listings are very similar um, to the largest degree possible for all of the all of the parameters that support H the new HSM cycles wherever possible. PTC has used the same naming and the same theory behind the parameters inside of the new HSM sequences so that they should be very familiar to people that are already using Creo in um, CNC manufacturing. Um, the sequences do a very nice job, excuse me, Oh, pardon me. Sequences do a very nice job with the machining that they do. I'm going to activate and display a pre-machined set on this part to show the results from the HSM um, system that's been created here. We have an HSM rough, an HSM rest rough, um, HSM finish, and HSM rest finish active in the model tree right now. And um, this, the finishes that are listed there can be more considered to be a semi-finish, if you will, as much as anything. Um, we're going to go ahead and look at some results from um, those machinings now. So I'm going to go ahead and open some results here. So um, this would be the result that I believe is, is, is shown after roughing. So this would be, you know, what we'll see here when your screen catches up and it finishes loading is the results of the NC or NC machining after roughing. And we can see here on my model, it's done a very nice job of keeping the sculpting of, of the roughing around on the model on all sides, um, if you will. For the new HSM sequences, do a very good job that way. Um, we'll also take a look at um, this model after finishing. So this would be after the sum, you know, after the finishing cycles from the HSM, as I mentioned, um, what's being loaded now for display. So bear with me while it takes a minute to load this file, you know, or load the load the finished machining information. And here we can kind of see that um, while it might not be finished explicitly, it, it's definitely obtained a semi-finishing result. And the the results of the the high, the HSM sequences have done a very good job at cusp management, as well as the quality of the result for the finishing sequences. So here we see the result of the the finishing, as I mentioned. And these new HSM sequences are available, I believe, in Creo somewhere late Creo 4 or Creo 5 and later um, to be deployed onto the ribbon. I do believe um, that, that the use of those might require a module, a high-speed machining module for Creo, but please don't quote me on that because I'm the technical guy, not the sales guy. Um, when in doubt at all, please refer to our sales team as they're going to have the most up-to-date information about module breakdowns and licensing and functionality as far as things to that effect go. But that's, that's just kind of a quick view of our new HSM uh, machining, if you will, um, that's available in the later versions of Creo. And for those that do what we would refer to as a lot of organic machining, or ball or sculpted tool work where we're using a ball end mill or a bull end mill, if you will, arguably um, those sequences should pay a great deal of dividends to those folks uh, using that work or doing doing that work in, in great amounts. Um, so we'll go ahead and close this now. Um, the next thing we're gonna take a look at are the striped wires that have become available for cabling operations inside of Creo. 
So um, one of the things that's been a little bit difficult and, you know, arguably non-existent visually. So historically, we would, we would define colors by name and assign them to wires, but we were only able to show solid colors. We weren't really able to show wires in the real context of how they look when they are multicolored and striped wires of some type. So let's have a look at a little bit of striped wire functionality today. So we're going to go ahead and activate the cabling module now. And I'm going to subsequently activate a harness on that cabling module. So now I've got a harness activated. And at this point, you know, this would be where we would go typically do cabling things and stuff to that effect. Um, this is an example that has logical data associated with it. So we're going to go ahead and read that logical data in, and I'm going to go ahead and do a root cables operation now. Um, because we've already got logical data established for this example, um, we'll be able to have it automatically root wires between the different connectors that you see on the screen. Now, it's, it's, it's worth noting that this logical data was created in advance of the demonstration, et cetera, to facilitate the automatic wiring that you will see. So we're going to go ahead and grab all of our wires that are found on our logical data here. So we're using the, the binoculars to go search for the wires that are associated with our logical data so that we can automatically route them. So we'll go ahead and select all these wires. Oops. There we go. We'll go ahead and select all these wires. And then you'll see the preview appear on the screen. So now we see the preview of the wire routing that's going to take place on the screen here um, for us. And I'm just going to go ahead and say OK to this. And there we go. Now we see that we have striped wires that are routing on our model. Um, the striped wire access and control for the new dialog is conveniently located in association with the spool definition. So on our spool drop-down menu, we now not only have spools, but we have cable stripes. So we can utilize this interface that I'll be bringing up now by selecting cable stripes to define these types of striped wires. And all that need be done now is a color must exist for this in your color palette. So in this case, you know, I have, you know, this wire is technically defined to be red. It was not defined with the, the striped definition. And I, I applied the striped definition for the purpose of this demonstration. So that's why we see the striped appearance as listed as red here, um, when normally it, you might use a, a little bit more granularity with the definition, you know, red, red and black, or whatever the case may be, to help define your colors to align them with the actual wire in question for its coloring. But basically, in this case now, in, in this, we have the stripes themselves. And in, in here, you can see we've got black and red stripes that are being deployed on the wire. And you can add sections to this. You can remove sections from this. And subsequently, continue to update and configure the stripes on the wire to run linear or to run horizontal, as you see, whatever the case may be. Um, they don't have to be displayed in one way or another. Uh, but they subsequently can. So here we see like the ground is would be subsequently displayed as a yellow with a green stripe uh, because it's only got one section defined on the wire. And we see that we have a base color for the wire and then we have the stripe color for the wire. And then depending upon the number of sections that you deploy, governs whether the stripes will be effectively horizontal or, you know, or I should say run longitudinally or run radially around the wire when they are viewed in the graphics area. So 
So with that, that's a little example of our new striped wires for Creo Parametric. And I'm going to go ahead and close this example now. And I'm going to keep the, 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 the webinar open. I'm going to put the, the promised PowerPoint back information up on the screen for both my own contact information and the Boundary Systems YouTube channel information, as well as the contact information for our sales team. And at this stage of the webinar, I would encourage everybody that, that potentially has questions to utilize the GoToWebinar interface to ask those questions and type your question out to me, and I will speak to it, um, you know, to the group um, so that the whole group can benefit from your question. Um, if you had a question specifically um, that would be something specific to your organization and would need be discussed in a more private context, don't hesitate to reach out to me specifically uh, by my email that's on the screen right now. Um, so with that, I'm, as I said, I'm going to go ahead and kind of keep I'm going to kind of be quiet now until the questions come in, and um, don't hesitate to use um, the question functionality in the GoToWebinar to send a question out to me, and I'll do my very best to speak to that. Um, we've got about 15 minutes or so left here for a question and an answer uh, before we wrap up our webinar for the day. So um, in advance, and anybody that needs to get out sooner than later and doesn't have time to stay for the question and answer, I greatly appreciate your time and participation today, and I look forward to and am more than, more than happy um, to follow up with you at a later time if you have specific questions or a follow-up concern or otherwise uh, related to this webinar. Do not hesitate to reach out to myself via email or our sales team via email. And again, I encourage everybody to take a look at the Boundary Systems YouTube channel to get greater information about things like augmented reality and Creo Simulation Live and things to that effect. So with that being said, um, we'll kind of keep the remainder open for some question and answer. And uh, please send those questions over to me if you have them.